children of the Lord Most High, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank God that the Lord still reigns. I am aware the sun is still setting and coming on time. The stars are still shining in the sky. I am aware that the plants are blossoming even now as it is raining. So we really, really praise our God that He is still in charge and reigns sovereignly. So I welcome you once again to God's Fortress Ministries as we deliver our ceremony today. My name is Reverend Godson Sebuguzi and I serve as a lead pastor. So please join with me today as we study the word uh, of the Lord our God. Let us pray as we begin our learning uh, this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks that you are the Lord still in charge and in control. Even though under the stringent measures of the pandemic, we know that we are still our God. And we believe that you are in charge of all things. Even when we get anxious, when we begin to fear, when we begin to have doubts in our hearts, we know that we still reign. And the sun coming up, the moon showing up, the stars shining are all great reminders. So Lord, I pray we will be strengthening our faith. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say with me, Amen. Amen, indeed. Today, uh, the Lord uh, put on my heart to share a very incredible subject. Uh, a title uh, called Prepare the Way for the Lord. Prepare the Way for the Lord. Please pick out your Bible and your pen and your notebook. You need them because uh, learning God's Word is significant and important. We can't just watch, but rather we need to be participative as much as we can. Now, the sermon, as I've mentioned, is Prepare the Way for the Lord. I was thinking about uh, preparing the way uh, for a journey, preparing for something. 2007, Uganda hosted a Chogam uh, meeting, the Commonwealth uh, meeting, and of course, a Queen of England or the UK was coming to Uganda. Uganda had a touch, the roads were paved up, flowers were everywhere, you know, everything was neat because what prepared for the way of the coming of the Queen of England. Of course, a very important person, as we all know. But you know that there is the preparation for a greater than the Queen of England, or the one greater than any other president on the face of the earth. And that is the preparation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming back soon. God's countdown is racing towards the prophetic fulfillment and obviously, the world is getting more and more chaotic in the process. And who knows, maybe even after the coronavirus uh, pandemic from Wuhan, China, you know, we'll have more trouble and all that. But you know what? It does not matter. We need to prepare our way for the Lord. And uh, I want to encourage us again as I start that regardless of all that you've had this week, what you have experienced, God is still in total and absolute control of anything else. And so we need to prepare and begin to remember the message of our brother John the Baptist, who actually was one of the greatest uh, of the prophets. Jesus in Matthew 11, 9 to 11 said, just said then, what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This means that John was a very important person in the kingdom of God at the time and when he served the Lord Almighty. Of course, John was sent by God to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ to do his ministry. And that was so critical. He was a forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ. And seemingly, the Lord is asking us to prepare also for the coming back of the Lord, for the rapture and the second coming. And we must adequately uh, prepare. Now, in the Bible, there are about four citations where uh, the words of, of John are repeated about preparing the way for the Lord. In Isaiah 40 and verse 3 says, 
A voice of one is calling out, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness, remove the obstacles, make straight and smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Such a clear, plain message was spoken by Isaiah. And when uh, Jesus uh, got, uh, was speaking, he referred to some scripture. Even Malachi uh, chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Behold, I'm going to send you my messenger, and will clear the way before me. And the Lord Adonai, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant whom you delight, behold, is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So we realize that these two messages were about John who was supposed to come and prepare the way for the coming Messiah. And biblically speaking, uh, whenever there are pandemics, whenever there are issues and challenges uh, in the world, when there are judgments, uh, the locusts, the floods, uh, the coronavirus, the wars and all that, usually God is seeking for attention and calling for men and women to prepare their hearts before the Lord. Or else, more judgments will show up. So I want to believe that the Lord is calling upon you and me to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Just like I've just quoted uh, uh, the Queen of England when she was coming in 2007, the nation of Uganda, the government of Uganda, worked so hard to make sure that all the preparations are made for the coming of the great dignitary in the world. Now, how much more should we do in preparation for the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? So, brother, sister, let's continue together in this word. Jesus talked so proudly about John the Baptist, like I've just mentioned. Now, let me read from the book of Matthew and hear what just said. Matthew 11, verse 7, down to 10. He says, as they were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? Really? What did you go out to see? A man dressed in fancy clothes? See, those who wear fancy clothes live in king's houses. Verse 9. Really? What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you even more than a prophet. This is the man about whom it is written, See, I am sending the messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way before you. So John the Baptist, like I've already mentioned, prepared the way for the Lord quite very, very ably. And Jesus was actually happy with the work of the ministry that John actually did because he did a fantastic job for his preparation and his coming. The Lord is calling upon the church, of which you and I are the church, to prepare for his coming on the rapture, which uh, we know that eventually uh, will come into many different things, but also prepare for eternity. We must prepare for eternity. We must prepare our hearts before the Lord. We must walk in the way of the Lord that none of us will miss to be with the Lord in all eternity. Brethren, Hell is not cool, not at all, but heaven is a place God has prepared for all those who love him. So we need to prepare our hearts, prepare ourselves, prepare in every way that we know how to, and prepare well like John did, preparing for the coming back of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why should we prepare the way for the Lord? Let me give reasons probably to make my point uh, more solid. Number one, like I've mentioned, Jesus is coming back soon. That's the rapture. In the Bible, there are a number of scriptures we find that talk about the rapture, where the believers will be caught in the air. First Thessalonians 4.17 talks about this great event. First Corinthians 15, verse 50 to 58, talk about the same event of the rapture of the church. But you know, when I was studying, I, I, I continued to study a little more. Then I discovered even men like Enoch, Genesis 5, verse 18 to 24, he was airlifted. I mean, what airlifted mean rapture or being caught up in air. So even Enoch himself was actually caught up in the air. 
That means that the same God has done all those many trends is going to do the same thing even now. Elijah, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 3 to 9, also was taken up or raptured or airlifted, and none of these men saw death. I want to believe that true and sincere believers will not go through the whole terrible time of the coming great tribulation. That means that like the wise virgins we find in Matthew 25, we must trim our lamps, we must prepare, we must be set for the coming back of Jesus because he alone is coming back and he alone is the Lord Almighty. The verse I've just quoted prove about the rapture of the church or the rapture of the saints or the rapture of the believers in Christ Jesus. Why? Because God loves us so much that yes, there are troubles we must go through, but sometimes God will save us from the troubles of the world. For example, we celebrated the Passover a while ago. And in the Passover, uh, you discover that the Lord saved the nation of Israel from the catastrophe that the Egyptians were going through, the judgments that God brought against the gods of Egypt. And God made sure that the place of Goshen was safe and was secure from all the troubles of the world. And, and you know what? I believe our God is so faithful that will save us also from the catastrophes coming of the tribulation, of the great trials. Yes, we must face through some, already we are facing some of them, but I believe God is going to rescue us in as much as we can. So I pray that the Lord will help us to stand, to stand up, to stand out in every way, to make sure that we are, are ruptured before the catastrophes get from bad to worse. So in the Passover, Exodus 12, the Bible says, For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the litter on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the doors and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. At that time, God still preserved the Jewish people, the Israelites in Egypt, a very troubled nation, more or less the world we live in today, so troubled, so chaotic, so wicked and weird. I don't think that the believers are going to face the same punishment and wrath like the heathens or the non-believers. In the same chapter of Exodus 12 and verse 30, the Bible says, Fellow got up in the night, and he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry or headache and sorrow in Egypt. But listen to this. The Bible says, For there was no house where there was not someone dead. That means the entire nation. But on the side of the question, it was all at peace. You know what I believe? The Lord is going to rapture us or save us from the trouble of the world that is going to face uh, in the days ahead. The other defense I have for my uh, saying that the church will not face the, the tribulation is in Esther chapter 9. We all remember how Haman came against the Jewish people where he wanted to kill all of them. But the Bible says that the tables turned. Uh, in Esther chapter 9, verse 1 and 3, the table stand and God saved the Jewish people from the catastrophe and from all the tribulation of Haman. And the Lord proved himself true. What about Noah? Noah in Genesis chapter 6, he was saved from the great floods and preserved. I really believe God is going to preserve the church uh, in this season. And therefore, we need to prepare as much as we can. Of course, we must take the precautions. We take nothing for granted. The scripture of 1 Corinthians 10 to 11 says, Now these things happen to them as examples, warning to us that they were written for our instruction to our domination and equip us upon the ends of the ages have come. This means that we shouldn't take our salvation for granted, but to work at it, sharpen it day and night. Prepare our way. How do we prepare? We're going to shortly, but when we will prepare is by walking the path of righteousness, walking in repentance, walking the way of the Lord. So we need to take our stand and be able to prepare for the second coming back of our Lord Jesus Christ and the rapture as well. And that's why the Lord our God is helping us to shape our lives, to bring ourselves into order and into control of all things. There's a brother in the Lord, he's called Brother Sandu Sander, 
uh, Singh is a, a born from a Sikh family in Punjab state in India, northern India. He prophesied, and I believe what God spoke to him was true. He said that the year 2020 is a year of great spiritual preparations. Why? Because of the greater trials coming ahead of us before the rapture, but also because the Lord is coming back soon. So, brother and sister, maybe this time we have to prepare ourselves. This is a window of opportunity during the coronavirus pandemic lockdown to set our hearts before the Lord before it is too late. You know, when you fail to prepare, you always find yourself in trouble. Do you remember Lottie's wife? She didn't prepare well. By the time she realized it was actually too late, what did she become? She became a pillar of salt. Well, like GFM, we're talking about pillars now to build our church. But you can imagine how a human being can become a pillar of salt. Why? Because she didn't prepare. Genesis 19, verse 23 to 24 talks about all that. What about King Saul? King Saul didn't also prepare accordingly. So what happened? King Saul loses favor before the Lord. Is it possible to lose God's favor? Yes, it's possible. We can lose our salvation. So we need to prepare adequately and prepare every day. We have no clue about tomorrow. What will happen the next day will happen the other day. But we must prepare uh, excellently. You know, I was reading a scripture about King Saul and I'm like, Oh God, may it not be me or any of you listening to me. The Bible says in First Samuel 15 verse 11, I regret that I made so king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. God was, you know, crying out of regret. May it not be you. May it not be me. Rather, let us prepare accordingly. Number two, why should we prepare? Because the church age or the gentle age is slowly closing down. God is turning the Jewish people for their salvation. God has given us sufficient time to hear the gospel as Gentile people. The gospel has been preached. Witnesses have come back and forth. A lot has happened concerning the gospel. Many Gentiles have gotten saved, but many more have rejected the gospel. I think God will waste any more time. He's now turning his attention to the nation of Israel. That's the reason why we must prepare and prepare well. The book of Ezekiel 36 and verse 27 says, I'll put my spirit within you and cause it to work in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments to do them. God is speaking about the nation of Israel, that he will put his Holy Spirit in them, and the Jewish people who are not working in his statutes will now begin to walk in his statutes. And brethren, these things are happening right now. Right now in Israel, there are so many Jewish believers. Of course, the majority are not yet, but I believe God is turning attention to their salvation. Some of us even mock the Jewish people that don't believe in the Bible. Well, it was for our sake that they did not believe, but now God is turning his attention to his firstborn nation. The prophet Isaiah said this in verse 1 uh, of chapter 43. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 says, But now the Lord who made you Jacob, please whenever you steward Jacob in the Bible, may also refer to the nation of Israel. And in a case, Jacob is one of the great-grandfathers of the nation of Israel. So it says, O Jacob, and he who made you, O Israel, do not be afraid. Verse 25 says, I even I am one who takes away your sins because of whom I am, and I will not remember your sins. These are the words of Jehovah to God Most High. Now, if you think God forgot about Israel, do not be fooled by the devil. God is turning attention to the nation of Israel. We must remember God is common with Abraham and the nation of Israel are unconditional. And I believe this is time now for God to fulfill those prophecies for the salvation of the Jewish people uh, from this time and the days ahead of us. Why should we prepare number three? Because there is more to gain eternally in glory than making ourselves comfortable in this shaking and stable world. Brethren, this world is not our home. 
we are visitors in this house, in this, in this, in this world. We don't belong here. We belong to a better place that's in glory. We belong to a better place in the presence of God. Don't be comfortable in this world. We are sojourners. We are in transit. Nobody builds a house on an airport. We don't do that. We are in transit. So we need to prepare because it would be much more to gain eternally than being in here. Let me remind us that the days ahead of us are going to be awesome when the Lord establishes the 1,000 reign of Christ or the millennial kingdom for a thousand years. The, the book of Revelation, John talks about uh, these 1,000 years in chapter 20 of Revelation, verse 1 to 7. But also 20 and verse 4, the Bible says that Christ reigns a thousand years on the earth. And that means that we need to prepare to be part of that great rulership of Christ when his capital is based in Jerusalem. How beautiful will it be when Jesus is a king of kings in Israel? We cannot miss that, brother and sister. Let's do all that we can and prepare ourselves and our lives for this, for this time of the millennial kingdom. The prophet Zechariah chapter 18, uh, 14 verses 8 uh, talks about this as well, that the Lord Jesus will rule the whole earth from Jerusalem. Can you imagine Jesus, the Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords, and is the headquarters in Jerusalem, and the rest of the world are part of his territories? Man, is going to be beautiful in the Millennial Kingdom. Now, allow me to give a description of what will happen during the time of the Millennial Kingdom. Imagine a world dominated by righteousness and goodness. A world where there is no injustice whatsoever, where no court ever renders an unjust verdict, and where everyone is treated fairly. Where, you know, it is all fair game. Today, you take a nation, the court of law, you have no clue what happens tomorrow. But you know, in the Millennial Kingdom, the courts will function well. There will be justice, there will be righteousness, there will be holiness, there will be love. Imagine a world where there is complete and total enforced and permanent peace, where joy abounds and good health prevails. So much so that people live for many, many years. And I really want to believe that uh, there will be no malaria, there will be no COVID, there will be no HIV AIDS, there will be no hepatitis B and all that. Because the Lord Jesus will give us good health. Can you begin to imagine a time where there are no vaccines? I mean, God is going to help us that it will all be well, we will be healthy and strong. Where we will not have to go to, you know, operation theaters and all that. The Lord is, is going to take us at place, but we must prepare. Millennial Kingdom will be a time when, where the curse is removed, where the environment is restored, the virgin purity of the Garden of Eden. Can you imagine when, the, when nature is pure, where you can drink water from any springs, which you can't do today, whereby the waters of the lakes are not soiled or not distorted, but everything is perfect, where the many things are going to happen that, you know, it will be overwhelming. The, the Bible says in Isaiah eleven six, and so the wolf will draw with the lamb, and the Lord will lie down with the young God, and the calf and the young lion, and fattling together, and a little boy will lead them. Can you begin to imagine a wolf with a lamb, or a leopard with a young god? Can you, I know many of you like uh, Nadja Wild, I also do, but I'm already so, I feel so bad when I see the lion is attacking antelopes and impalas, I don't like that scene. But you know the time when the lions are no longer harmful, but they are harmless? Can you imagine a time when crocodiles will be beautiful creatures? You know how crocodiles look like? They are really, really aggressive animals in the water. Uh, the other day I was watching that Joe and I saw this croc, uh, you know, that actually, you know, grabbed, ate part of the head of a lion that had come to drink water from that stream. You know, can you imagine all that to be over? Imagine a world ruled by perfect and just glorious ruler who instantly and firmly deals with sin of lying or immorality or corruption or bloodshed where there's no room for wickedness. 
Of course, humanly speaking, these descriptions may seem far-fetched, a utopia fantasy uh, that maybe may classify it. Probably think about this Cinderella, uh, you know, with a, you know, a floating chair in space. Uh, probably, you know, drinking coffee, you know, up of the clouds. But this one's Cinderella. Actually, this actually describes the conditions during the future earthly millennial kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to prepare ourselves, prepare the way for the Lord. You better be part of that. You better be part of what God is doing. And time of the preparation is now, not any further. Let me give some more uh, takeaways. I like takeaways. Let me give some takeaways today, uh, this morning. Number one, uh, going back to the book of Mark, actually that was supposed to be the major scripture, Mark chapter 1, verse 20. I'll not read it. Let me pick a few verses for our takeaways. Verse 4, John pre preached the baptism of repentance of sin. Now, John, as we've already seen, was a man who preached the gospel of repentance. And, and I believe that uh, uh, there is no better message for us to preach or to prepare with than the gospel of repentance. Repentance of sin, purifying ourselves, pursuing righteousness. That's the preparation I believe still the Lord is talking about in the day and age we live in. We need to walk in repentance. The Lord is prayer, one of the key verses, I think verse 10, uh, 6, 10, Matthew 5, Matthew 6 rather, that what uh, uh, verses talk about the Lord's Prayer. And part of the Lord's Prayer is, Lord, forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Brother, sister, I walk in repentance. Or do you justify your actions day back and forth? Maybe even in your marriage, you are always arguing about this and the other. It's time to learn to break down and begin to walk in repentance before your husband before your wife, before your children, before any other person whom you have wronged and take responsibility. This was the message of John the Baptist. In verse 6 of uh, the same chapter of Mark, Mark uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 6 says, John wore a clothing made of camel's hair with a belt of camel's hair, and he ate locusts with wild honey. Well, we have had locust invasion uh, lately in our nation, and uh, we praise the Lord for our government working so hard to bring them under control. And of course, the prayer of the saints to evade or take away the, the, the tragedy of locusts. But you know, to John, locusts were food. And uh, look what he eats at his dirty uh, locusts and then wild honey. And then what does he wear camel's hair and the belt of camel? I mean, he lived a basic lifestyle. He lived in simplicity. What was he doing? He was living contrary to the indulgency of other religious leaders of his day who loved it all. They wanted, you know, you know, the, the best part of life. Man, they lived large, they worked big, they had a big name and titles before them. And an alarming mention is that this is a key verse to our spiritual leaders with the pastors and prophets and evangelists. You know, you're powerful, you're renowned, you're a big church, you, you have these massive numbers, you know, all over the place. And you know, John lived the contrary of the men and women who had issues with their spiritual lives in his time. So his eating habits, his lifestyle, his dressing styles were all contrary to the indulgency of the world. The book of Mark clarifies this a little more. It says, Mark 12, verse 38 40. In the course of his teaching, he was saying, Beware of the scribes, just, just speaking here, who like to walk around in long robes. These were the, the priests and the Pharisees, uh, the Sadducees, other people said they were sad to see. Uh, displaying their prominence and like to receive respectful greetings in the marketplaces 
and they love the chief seats in the synagogues and place of distinction and honor and banquets. These scribes would devour, confiscate widows' houses and offer long prayers for appearances' sake to impress others. These men will receive greater condemnation. This is really to contemplate what John was. But you know, and we live in the same time age where we the spiritual leaders, you know, live different from those that we lead. We have shown a bad example in terms of the indulgences and all the, the sweetness of this world at the expense of the gospel. And we distort it because we want the big numbers, we want big money, we want big givings. My fellow preacher, if you're listening to me, I pray that you take heed as well. That we will be able to be examples, those that, that we lead. And by being, by being examples of our lifestyles. Now, in theology, this is called the principle of, of simplicity. Can we be simple? Jesus was born in a manger, in, in a crowd with animals. Jesus had no land titles. He had no donkey. He had to borrow one when he wanted one. He, he, I mean, there was nothing attachment that he had. Of course, somebody asked the question, uh, if Jesus was uh, to be in our day, what car would he drive? Would he drive a uh, Penconi? Would he drive a Land Rover? I do not think so. Maybe we drive like my simple car I drive, you know. But you know, I'm not saying you enjoy the, the banners. I'm saying, much as we, we do it, much as we, 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 we have the things, those things should never be our focus. Our focus should be on the coming back of our Lord Jesus Christ. The rich young man in the Bible just told him, well, go and sell everything else, and then come and follow me. Could it be in it for, you need to sell some of the things you have for the sake of the gospel? Maybe yes, maybe no. But anyway, spiritual preparation, we need to practice simplicity and be what God has called us to be. Again, those of us spiritual leaders, and I have another verse for us, uh, not only for you, but also for me. Yes, that's true for me as well. James 3 verse 1 says, Not many of you should become teachers, serving in an official teaching capacity. My brothers and sisters, for you know that we who are teachers, prophets, evangelists, pastors, will be judged by a higher standard because we have assumed greater risk accountability and more condemnation if we teach incorrectly. If we teach incorrectly. And of course, teaching is beyond speaking the words. Your behavior, people learn from it. You are teaching by behavior, by character, by lifestyle, and everything else. So we need to prepare and make sure that we do not get caught on the wrong side of it all. In the same chapter of Mark, chapter 1, verse 7 says, and this, I love John, John, John the Baptist. He says in verse 7, After me will come one who is more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. Please understand that John was preparing the way for the Lord. He didn't grab the shore. He was saying, I'm unworthy, not even take the thongs, you know, the, the shoe races. I mean, you know that shoes would be the least thing you would touch on someone else. I mean, shoes step everywhere. But John was saying, even those shoes, I'm not worthy to touch them. John prepared the way for the Lord Jesus. God is calling upon us that we prepare the way for the Lord. Don't prepare a way for yourself, for your name, for your fame, for your prosperity, for your you know, status. We must prepare for no other person but for our God. John decreased. He let Jesus increase. Brother, sister, can you, can you decrease that just in you will increase? When you speak, what do people hear? Do they hear you or do they hear Jesus? When you act, what do people see? Do they see Jesus or do they see you? I really think we must get off from the borderlines where people are not so sure whether they're they seeing you or see Jesus. It must be black and white. Let them see Jesus, the Lord Most High. So John gave Christ the highest honor. And he himself was left with nothing. We must give it all to our Lord Jesus. 
We must never take his glory. We must never take his status. We must never use our Lord as a, a subject. We need to make sure that we use uh, our Jesus well, for lack of a better word. And Jesus uh, enjoys us like John when we give him all the glory and all the honor. Who is at the center of your heart, of your life? Who is at the center of all the things you do, you aspire to do and to be? Jesus should be at the center of it all. It's a time now to prepare our way for the Lord. And the other part was about in verse 8. Uh, Jesus said, rather John said, I'll baptize you with water, but we'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, all believers are baptized by water and also by fire. And remember that baptism is a symbol of Christ's burial and resurrection. So our entrance into the water during baptism identifies us with Christ's death and on the cross and this burial in the tomb. And again, as we come out, it is his resurrection from the dead. This means that the post, uh, John uh, realized that he had limitations. He's like, all I can do is baptize you in water. But one greater than me is coming who will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in the fire. How I pray that we and uh, you and I will admit our limits. You know, you can't say you know it all. And that's the danger many times amongst believers where we think we know it all. It's a lie. It is impossible. We have limitations. It is only Jehovah God who knows everything, who can do everything, who can sort out things we can't sort out. So John, you know, decreased lower that Jesus may increase higher. And that's how we are going to prepare accordingly. So in baptism, as I was saying, the John baptism in the river Jordan was like, man, you know, we need to die to self. We need to die to self. We need to die to self and be like Christ. In Colossians 2, uh, Apostle Paul makes some clarification about the burial, I really, rather the baptism. I really like the way he put it. He said, for you were buried, I'm reading from Colossians 2, verse 12 to 13. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life, because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Verse 13 says, uh, you were dead because of your sins, and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away, then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. Let me challenge you in this season. You need to be baptized in water. Maybe you're listening to me and you've never gone under baptism. Please be baptized in water, and also be baptized in the fire. Well, we thank God that uh, the Feast of Pentecost is not far. Uh, will be the last Sunday of this month. And we talk about the Feast of Pentecost, that is uh, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. And you know what? I believe during the coronavirus, you can still be baptized in water. Maybe you're asking how. Well, maybe in your bathtub, or you can be baptized. You can baptize your children. Yes, you can. Uh, you know, find a way. And also baptize with the Holy Ghost. You know, we need to believe God that we walk in the power of your Holy Spirit. I'm really so convinced that the rupture, part of it would be because of that, you know, divine empowerment of the Spirit of God that will be able to be taken and be airlifted uh, to meet the Lord in air and will be with the Lord together. Therefore, we must take this as serious as much as we can. We're looking forward for the Feast of Pentecost the coming or the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Harvest or the latter first fruits coming on the 31st of this very month. And you know, May the Lord help us at this season. We are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and be charged in the Holy Ghost and pray in the realm of the Spirit and listen to the voice of God and read the Word of God with understanding, with meaning, with authenticity that we can be able to have. That you and I, in as much as coronavirus lockdown, we will be alive in our spirits. That if the rapture did happen tomorrow, you and I, we'll meet up in the sky together, celebrating, praising the Lord 
for his divine power at work in our lives. Saints, prepare the way for the Lord. As I conclude today, our subject has been prepare the way for the Lord. We have seen several places in the Bible where disasters, famine like famine and judgment, we are calling where God used them, calling men and women to a place of repentance or mending their ways. I really believe God is doing the same during the coronavirus lockdown, that we may take advantage of this time to prepare our way for the Lord. Matthew chapter 3, verse 3, it says that make ready the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Do you have in your life path that are not straight? Unresolved conflicts. Do you have issues that are pending? Unconfessed sins. Have you been unjust to other people? Have you been unfair? Have you been critical of others? Is your tongue under control? Do your ears hear well the voice of God? Are you compromising on God's word? Whatever it is, God is asking us to mend our ways and make ready for the coming back of our God and of our King. The book of Proverbs says, verse 11 to 3, The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the unfaithful will destroy them. Don't allow crookedness, those paths that are straight, to destroy you. Make your way clean and clear. Like I told you about the preparation of the queen uh, coming to Uganda 2007. Man, every road was neat. Gardens were planted. I mean, she was coming. We must do the same thing for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question today. Are you born again? Have you been baptized in water and in the Holy Spirit as evidence of speaking other tongues? Do you speak in other tongues? Have you been baptized in the Spirit of God? As a believer, can you really pray for the sick? Can you lay your hands on them? Can you... Can, 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 can you... Can you... Can you can, can you pray for the sick and they get well? We need to be able to take those challenges. We need to make sure that we can be believers who intercede, who stand our ground, who pray, who wait upon God. In the book of Mark, again, we have again the book of Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 17. For those of you who are not yet born again, this is for you. After John was put in prison, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news in God of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, verse 17. Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Or other version says, fish as of men. If you're not yet born again, I believe this word is critical for you. Jesus is saying, come and follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. You need to follow Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is a life. And there is no other way. We talk about preparing the way for the Lord. He is the only way. The Bible says, Acts 4, 12, there's not any other way for men to be born again except the name of Jesus. Father, in heaven we come to you. Now, if you're not yet born again, please place prayer after me. Say, dear Father in heaven, I come to you. And I ask you, Lord, that you wash my sins and forgive me of all my failures. Write my name in the book of life and blot it all from the book of death. That Lord, I will live for you. And so this day, I heed your call 
to prepare the way for you. Like John the Baptist did, Lord, I do follow that call. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen to me. To some of you already born again, please also make this prayer with me. Say, dear God, I realize the days are closing down. I realize you are coming back soon. Help me with all my strength, with all my energy within me to amend my ways, to prepare the way for the Lord. I ask you, Jesus, to strengthen me, that my way will be clear and clean and neat. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I know the Lord has heard it, that you prepare the way for the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will help us to prepare that way for King Jesus. If you pray the prayer of repentance to know the Lord, uh, Pastor Antonio is going to share something that will help you on our Facebook page, to help you to grow to know the Lord. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you are in Intinda, whether you are in Kulambiro, whether you are in the, uh, Komamboga or Chisasi, or even far beyond that, those places, go to our Facebook page. Even there's a number that you can call any of our pastors or our deacons or elders to help you about the decision to follow Jesus. And let me encourage us again that let's continue to be strong in the Lord amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Our God has not forsaken us, but let's prepare our way for the Lord. God will bless you and make you a great blessing. Shalom.